Welcome to what every affiliate marketer should know about Webmaster Tools. As a special thank you for attending our webinar, we're providing a link to the presentation in HTML5 format so it can be viewed on a computer, tablet, or smartphone. The links in this presentation will take you to more information about that topic. You will also receive a discount coupon code worth 50% off an Affiliate Plus membership and special offer purchases. Please feel free to submit a question so that I can answer it during the webinar. I will answer questions after the presentation and after demonstrating Webmaster Tools. I anticipate that the webinar will last a little bit over an hour. My name's uh, Gary Ramey, and I'd like to give you a brief overview of my background. I have a master's degree in graphic design and over 15 years experience creating websites. My big claim to fame for website design is having been the senior project manager for Enrique Iglesias' first website. I currently have over 40 of my own websites, most of which are affiliate sites. <clears throat> I have also worked for an ad agency and printer as an application specialist, project manager, and IT director. As you can see, I've dealt with many high-profile clients and have extensive professional experience. I currently teach at three colleges in South Florida. Before I start talking about Webmaster Tools, it will be a good idea to cover some fundamentals about Google and other search engines. First, we'll take a look at how search engines crawl your site and index the contents. Search engines crawl the internet looking for websites and gathering information about the content of the sites and changes in each site. The programs that call, crawl the internet are referred to as robots, bots, or spiders. Using Webmaster Tools, it's possible to force feed Google your sitemap. A sitemap is an XML document that lists the pages in your site and can contain categories and keywords. If you are using WordPress, you can install free plugins that will automatically create the sitemap for you. Crawled pages are added to Google's index. Content tags such as H1 through H6 and paragraph tags, title tags, and alt attributes are considered when indexing and ranking pages. Google cannot process the content of media-rich files such as those created by Flash. HTML5 will not necessarily solve this problem because HTML5 depends heavily on JavaScript for interactivity. Google also has problems processing JavaScript. All of us want our sites to rank well on search results. In order to rank, you must ensure that Google can crawl and index your site. You will also find that Google has a wealth of information that will let you know what you should and should not do. Google wants to ensure that a user's search results are as relevant as possible. Their job is to make sure that a user finds what they want within the first few pages of search results. Relevancy is determined by over 200 factors. Don't put too much emphasis on page rank. It is only one factor. Page rank is determined by the number of sites linking to your site, but Google evaluates those sites. Low quality links that can easily be created yourself will not impact page rank as much as you would hope. Google is looking for organic links links created by real users. These are the tool categories that you will find in Webmaster Tools. We'll go over each of them separately. The site dashboard provides an overview of your site's status. You can see whether Googlebot is experiencing any crawl errors, a graph of search queries, and the number of URLs that have been submitted and indexed. From the dashboard, you can dig deeper into any errors that have been reported. Site appearance. The tools listed under site appearance can be used to influence the way Google will display information for your site in search results. It is possible for you to use Webmaster Tools to influence the way that Google will display those results. One important new tool is the data highlighter. Later, I'll show you how to use the data highlighter to let Google know about important information on a page, such as ratings. 
Search traffic tools include search queries, links to your site, and internal links. Information in this chart should complement the information that you find in Google Analytics. They will complement each other, but don't expect the information to correlate perfectly. Google uses different methods to gather the data. Even though the number of impressions is usually useful, the number of clicks is often erroneous. Many of my sh sites show exactly five clicks per day instead of showing the actual number of clicks. Take this information with a grain of salt. The links to your site tool not only displays who links to your site, but how many links it has found to your site within the other site. The top links to this particular site are my own sites. You can also see your most linked content and the anchor text used for links. You can use this information to determine what products to add to your site or which topics are most popular and write more articles on the same related topic. One of the factors Google analyzes when determining relevance is engagement. If someone goes to your site and looks at only one page, Google considers that visit a bounce. On the other hand, if the user views many pages in your site, Google considers the user engaged. This means that it is a good idea to have many links between your pages that will lead the user to other pages that they might want to view. For WordPress sites, it is a good idea to use the More tag in your posts so that the user will be forced to click More in order to read the rest of the article. The Google Index tools include index status, content keywords, and remove URLs. Google looks at content keywords in Webmaster Tools differently than in AdWords or Analytics. Webmaster Tools lists each word separately and shows the number of times the word is used and the number of variations of the word that are found in the site. The crawl tools are crawl errors, crawl stats, fetches Google, blocked URLs, sitemaps, and URL parameters. We'll dig deeper into each of these tools later. Malware. Google will prevent users from accessing sites containing malware. If Google detects malware on your site, find the malware and get rid of it. It's a good thing that Webmaster Tools lets you know immediately if malware has been detected. There are also some additional tools. You'll find that the Structured Data Markup Helper is exactly the same thing as the Data Highlighter, and we'll be looking at both of those later. Google Places is for local businesses, and Google Merchant Center is for retail merchants that sell physical products. These two tools are not relevant for affiliate marketers. Under labs, you'll find um, various different kinds of tools. For instance, author stats or custom search. Labs can be changed and go away at any time. Be careful implementing anything listed under labs because it can malfunction. I've started verifying ownership or authorship on some of my sites because of the advantage of having my picture show up in search results. I've found that it doesn't always work. Site performance is only listed in Webmaster Tools in order to let you know that Google doesn't support it anymore. So how do we verify a site? Once you have joined Webmaster Tools, you add your sites to it, and then you verify that you're actually the webmaster or owner of that site. In order to add your site to Webmaster Tools, you must prove that it's your site. There are four ways to do that. You can add a meta tag to your home page, upload an HTML file to the root directory of your site. You can make a DNS text record by adding a new DNS record, or you can add analytics code to your site before adding the site to Webmaster Tools. If Webmaster Tools detects Google Analytics code in your site, it will associate the two together. This is currently my preferred method of verifying my sites in Webmaster Tools because I can then see Webmaster Tools data in analytics.
leveraging webmaster tools. What we need to cover next is how do you get people to link to your site? Does my top level domain impact my site's performance in search? In other words, does it make a difference whether I have a .com or a .biz? Why don't my images appear in Google image search? And why don't my videos appear in Google search? So let's look at each one of those separately. How do you get people to link to your site? Google has made it clear that unique, compelling content is the best way to get people to link to your site. I've seen many affiliate marketers claiming that Google doesn't compare content between sites. This is untrue. Google not only compares content between sites, but will penalize sites with duplicate content. How do I know? <laughs> I have had two of my sites de-indexed by Google due to duplicate content. Google considered both sites to be thin affiliate sites. Part of the definition of a thin affiliate is that the site contains the same description as the site that is actually selling the product. Expect for Google to begin checking for spun text as well. Be sure to read Google's webmaster guidelines thoroughly. Take note that Google is very good at detecting unnatural links, so don't participate in any link schemes. Does my top level domain impact my site's performance in search? I've been buying biz, .me, .info, .co, .uk domain names and the sites are ranking in search results. Google makes it very clear that a Google search will return the most relevant results and the top level domain is irrelevant. Why don't my images appear in Google image search? Google loves text. The only way that Google knows what is in an image is through the file name and the alt tags. I'll cover this in more detail in a few minutes. Why don't my videos appear in Google search? Videos fall into the same category as images. Google can't detect anything within the content of a video, so you need to submit a video sitemap to Google if you want your videos to be indexed properly. 301 redirects. 301 redirects are used to point all your pages from an old site to a new site as well as to ensure the search engines see the www and non-www name of your site as the same site. This consolidates your index to one listing instead of two unrelated listings. You also need to let Google know which name you prefer in Webmaster Tools. I'll show you how to do that in the demo portion of the webinar. You will need to make a change in your .ht access file <coughs> in order to um, help ensure that Google is going to know which um, version of your domain name you want it to use as well. Webmaster guidelines provide you with ex excellent information about various design and content guidelines, technical guidelines, and quality guidelines. In the following slides, I'll talk about the most important of those guidelines. For design and content guidelines, you want to make sure that you have a site with a clear hierarchy in text links. Every page should be reachable from at least one static text link. Offer a site map to your users with links that point to the important pages of your site. Now this is kind of um, an antiquated method. I'm not really doing that on any of my sites. Keep the links on a given page to a reasonable number. If you have too many links on a page, Google may interpret that page as just simply a link farm. Create a useful, information-rich site and write pages that clearly and accurately describe your content. You will find that Google definitely emphasizes content. Luckily, WordPress posts and pages are indexed properly by Google, so you don't really have to worry about it. Think about the words users use to find your pages and make sure your site actually uses those words within it. 
Try to use text instead of images to display important names, content, or links. The Google crawler doesn't recognize text contained in images. If you must use images for textual content, consider using the alt attribute to, and include a few words of descriptive text. Also, make sure that your title elements and alt attributes are descriptive and accurate. You will also want to check for broken links and correct HTML. And as I mentioned, WordPress posts and pages are indexed properly by Google. And you can uh, review Google's recommended best practices in the links that I've provided. Best practices for images. Like I said, Google loves text. Don't be tempted to use images for headings and subheads. The page rank will be better in search results if you use real text. Also use descriptive names for image files. You'll see that in the example that's here on this slide is that it indicates my new black kitten.jpg is a lot more informative than img00023, which would mean nothing to Google. It's a good idea to make sure that you create great alt text for your images. The alt attribute is used to describe the contents of an image file, and it's important for several reasons. Most, of, most important is that it provides Google with useful information about the subject matter of the image. They use this information to help determine the best image to return for a user's query. Here are some best practices for images. I'm going to start with bad stuff and then end up with uh, something to be avoided. So what's bad? Just having some, a name that's not descriptive like pick 4532. What's not so good is to just have puppy.jpg and then nothing for the alternate. What's better is to have puppy.jpg and then have an alternate of puppy. But what's best? puppy.jpg, and then to have a descriptive alt tag such as Dalmatian puppy plain fetch. What you want to avoid is keyword stuffing. This example, this last one, the to be avoided example, is showing how someone would be attempting to fool Google and uh, try to have this picture show up for a lot of different search results that would not be uh, relevant search results. Best practices for videos. As with images, if you use WordPress, you can install free plugins that will create a sitemap for videos. Then add that sitemap to your robots.txt and let Webmaster Tools know about it. For technical guidelines, you do want to make sure that you use a robots.txt file on your web server. This file tells crawlers which directories can or cannot be crawled. Make sure it's current for your site so that you don't accidentally block the Googlebot crawler. Here's an example of a uh, robots.txt file. The robots.txt file is used to tell bots what areas of your site to ignore as well as where to find your site maps. It is important that you have robots.txt files so that you can search engines will know how to crawl your site. WordPress uses a virtual robots.txt file. You can upload an actual file or install a plugin to alter the virtual version. I usually use a real file except for WordPress multi-site installations. Here we have some more technical guidelines. Many plugins that generate affiliate links allow you to turn on nofollow. It is a good idea to use nofollow or Google may lower your rankings. Notice that under their guidelines they state make reasonable efforts to ensure that advertisements do not affect search engine rankings. Use the nofollow tag. And I've provided a link so that you can find out more about nofollow. Use your robots.txt to prevent crawling of search results pages or other auto-generated pages that don't add much value for users coming from search engines. A 
please ensure that you don't do anything listed on this slide. If you do, you will probably find your site de-indexed. These are extremely important quality guidelines. Avoid any hidden text or hidden links. Don't use cloaking or sneaky redirects. Not only is this important to Google that you don't do that, but if you're an Amazon affiliate, you'll find that within their terms that you're not supposed to use cloaking either. Don't send any automated queries to Google. Don't load pages with irrelevant keywords. Don't create multiple pages, subdomains, or domains with substantially duplicate content. And don't create pages with malicious behavior, such as phishing, installing viruses, trojans, or other badware. You should also avoid doorway pages created just for search engines. Do create pages that provide unique and relevant content. If your site participates in an affiliate program, make sure that the site adds value. Otherwise, Google will consider your site a thin affiliate, and then you could be in jeopardy of having them de-index the site. Webmaster Tools will also allow you to do reconsideration requests. Let's say that Google has um, sent you an email stating that you are not uh, following their guidelines. What you can do is to submit a reconsideration request. Only submit a reconsideration request if you actually took action and corrected anything within your site that goes against Google's guidelines. Google will not tell you very much in any kind of communication that they have with you. It's up to you to investigate their guidelines, read through them thoroughly, and find out why it is that my site is violating their guidelines. Before we go into the demo, I want to present a shameless plug for AffiliatePlus.biz. Uh, they're the hosts for this webinar. AffiliatePlus.biz is a membership site specializing in targeting affiliate marketers. Everything in the site is geared toward ensuring that affiliate sites are successful, efficient, and cost-effective. As a special thank you for attending this webinar, we are offering a discount coupon code worth 50% off Affiliate Plus membership and special offer purchases. Please make note of this code and feel free to use it. I'm going to check now and see if I have any questions. Um, I think I have to refresh here to be able to see it. And if I don't have any questions, then what I'll end up doing is going straight into the demo. And I'm not seeing any active questions. All right. So it's time now to demonstrate Webmaster Tools. So let me get out of um, my presentation. And we'll go into Webmaster Tools. To sign up for Webmaster Tools, do a Google search for Webmaster Tools, then click the Sign Up button in the upper right of the web page. I'm not going to demonstrate that because I'm already logged in and I don't want to mess up any of my tabs that I have here for the demonstration. Um, once you've signed up, then you should be able to get into Webmaster Tools and begin adding your own sites to it. Take note that affiliateplus.biz uh, and www.affiliateplus.biz have both been added to Webmaster Tools. It's necessary to do this so that you can let Google know which name you prefer. For affiliateplus.biz, I prefer the non-www version. So that is the version that I will select for the demo. Now, since we're talking about 
the www version versus the non www version i'm going to show you where you tell google which one you prefer what you want to do is to select site settings from the gear pull down and then this is where you tell it which preferred domain that you have and you can see that i have told them that I prefer my affiliate plus dot biz. What that means is that any of the search results will always show just affiliate plus dot biz. It's not going to show www dot affiliate plus dot biz. And both of those are pointing toward affiliate plus dot biz. Also, I have already added a 301 redirect, which is uh, also ensuring that affiliate plus dot biz shows up properly for users whenever they type it in. In other words, if they type in www dot affiliate plus dot biz, then their browser will automatically convert it and drop the www because I've indicated I don't want that within my um, 301 redirect. To re receive email notifications from webmaster tools, we're going to click here on the um, gear icon again. We're going to go to the Webmaster Tools Preferences and there is where you can tell it to e notify you as well as for you to say which email address you want to use for those purposes. One of the most important areas you can access from the site dashboard is the site maps. And so I'm oftentimes going in here, taking a look at it, seeing exactly what's going on with my sitemap. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see that I have um, submitted 255 URLs and that Google has indexed 77 of those. In order to submit or test a sitemap, all you have to do is to click the Add Test Sitemap button right here at which point you just give Google the name of your sitemap and that would be a sitemap.xml most of the time. I usually keep the sitemap at the root level of the site. Be sure that you do test the sitemap before adding it to your site. Then down here you can see that we can actually tell when Google last processed this sitemap. By giving Google your sitemap, you're force-feeding Google your site content. I've actually seen content indexed within hours of submitting a sitemap. Usually it will take a day or two, uh, depending on the kind of sitemap. It may take weeks. For instance, I've noticed that video sitemaps take longer to be processed and indexed than standard sitemaps. You can submit separate sitemaps for web pages, images, and videos. From sitemap, you can see the number of URLs that have been submitted versus the number of URLs that have been indexed. The reason why Affiliate Plus has many unindexed URLs for this particular site is because most of the site is protected content and only available to members. Take note, you can also see the last time that Google processed your sitemap. This can be good information to provide clients. If Google hasn't processed the sitemap in a while, you can select the sitemap and resubmit it. If you've made a lot of changes to the site, it doesn't hurt to resubmit your sitemap again. For instance, let's say that it's an affiliate site, you just added a lot of products, and you want to make sure that Google is going to add those new products to the index as soon as possible. Just come right over into Webmaster Tools, select the sitemap, and then select resubmit. Oh, now let's just take a quick look at site mess messages. Notice there hasn't been very many site messages for this site. Uh, it actually was uh, started in, in Webmaster Tools in uh, 3.6, and then I uh, also uh, linked it to my Google Analytics property on 3.25. Site messages can show you when you change preferences for a site. 
or if Google has found that your site violates their webmaster guidelines. When I had my two sites de-indexed, I did receive a site message for it, and it was in this area. If you get, and again, I want to emphasize, if you get a message about violating guidelines, it will not be informative. It is up to you to figure out what Google wants you to fix. Under search appearance, you will find structured data. This page lets you know uh, that you even have structured data on your site. So I'm going to select it, and then you can see that it's showing that I have 25 items. So how did I give Google this information? How did I let them know that there's structured data? Well, they have a brand new tool called the Data Highlighter that allows you to do that. So what I'm going to do is switch over to one other page. I've got a, another um, page open for another one of my sites. This one's my trick photography site. And this is what you first see whenever you go to the data highlighter before you've added any data. Uh, within my first site I showed you, you'll see that when I click the data highlighter here, I'm actually seeing what data has been highlighted. And you can see I've got five pages in this page set and I've got 25 pages in that one. And so I'm going to show you how you actually um, highlight your page and give Google an idea of exactly what's within that page. So what we're going to do is start highlighting. And we get this very simple dialog box. I'm going to go over to my trick photography site and just grab the URL come back to Webmaster Tools and paste it in here. I have to let go Google know what type of information is going to be highlighted because it changes the kind of data set that you will have. In this particular case, I have an article. But if you had products or any of these other kinds of data, you could select something different. So I'm going to select articles. And I'm going to try tagging this page and others like it because I've got a, this is a blog site so that Google ought to be able to find a lot of other pages that are similar to this one. Then I just select OK. Google is then going to load my page into the highlighter and now what I have is the ability to highlight certain data and then tell Google what it is. For instance, if I highlight this area, it's the title. If I highlight this area, that's for the date, and I can put in that that is the month. And then I can also indicate the day. and the year. And then finally I'm going to actually highlight that I'm the author of this post. And you'll see that it's filling in here. If this were a site where it had ratings or votes or something on it, I can also highlight those. All right. Just real quick, I'll give you an idea of why you really want to be able to do this. I have another site that's for outdoor cooking that I recently used the highlighter on. And uh, in that site, I'm selling Weber um, gas grills. Notice that it actually has a rating that's associated with this search. This is just a typical Google search and the results. All of these are from my site and all of them incorporate that rating which means that it's going to stand out from these other sites that don't have that. So it's a good idea to make sure that you're going to utilize this new tool and highlight everything. So I'm going to select done now and it found only three pages in this. So I'm going to accept those three pages, and uh, let's. I'm just going to call this articles demo, and create a page set. For some sites, you're going to have to um, highlight each individual page. 
All right, it's now going to show me some of those pages and it's showing me what it's highlighting. And see, this is a different page and it's showing me what it's highlighting as far as the title, my name, etc. So I can look at the next one and the next one, and that's it because it only found three pages that it thought met that criteria. And then I can tell it to publish it. What will end up happening is that the next time that Google takes a look at my site, it will see this new structured data. And so we should actually start to see some structured data over here now. It's showing there's 22 items and eight pages that it decided to associate that data type to. All right, so this is an extremely powerful new tool that would be extremely helpful to make sure that uh, this, your search results are going to stand out from other people's search results. One other thing that you'll want to do, and it's listed under, under labs, is to start um, associating the authorship with your site. And because if you can do that, then we'll, what will end up happening is that you'll have your picture or whatever photograph that you put in will end up showing up within the search results too. Now this is under labs so it's not working 100% and Google has been changing the way in which you do this so I'm not going to go into that today but I did want you to know that when it works it's great because then when someone you look and you see like this person's done it too Videos can oftentimes show up as well if you've done a video sitemap. And you'll see that under photography, there are a lot of people that have made sure that they have their author photos showing up properly. So I intend to continue working with this and hopefully it moves out of just being a lab portion of Webmaster Tools and becomes something that's um, in their permanent list here. All right, so we just looked at the structured data. You can also see that there are uh, HTML improvements that Webmaster Tools will make. For instance, it's telling me that I have duplicate title tags within my site. Google doesn't like that. They want you to have different title tags. So if you see this showing up, then you can select it and then see, well, what is it that it's seeing? Well, in this particular case, it's because of my categories that it's actually showing me the um, same page in each case. So it's really not duplicate data. It's just Google's a little confused. So I'm not going to have to fix it. But if they were two, actually two totally different pages, then you would want to change the title in one or the other of them so that it would, would not cause any confusion for Google. Then next thing we have under site, um, under search appearance is site links. Site links are whenever you see other kinds of listings underneath the, the main search description. Uh, you cannot control this. You can, the only thing you can do with it is that if it's showing up for you, you can tell Google to demote a site link and no longer show it. I've had some of my sites begin to have site links under them, which is great because then you can have various categories that are going to show up uh, uh, for a user and it also makes you really stand out within sites re results. Uh, but uh, you're not able to force Google to do this. It's up to them on whether they're going to do it or not and they're fairly inconsistent to be real honest. The next thing is uh, search traffic where you can see search queries for your site and so notice that we have a link that's going back to Google Analytics also. Then we have a really important one which is links to your site. This is where you can see who else is linking to me and in this case the imarketingblog.info that's one of my sites and so I've got uh, a links back to affiliateplus.biz that are within that and notice that it shows me not only who's linking to me but it's also showing me how many links that uh, Webmaster Tools has found within that site that come back to my site. 
Then I've got affiliatebuzz.biz, which is another one of my sites, and there are 42 links there. Video Tutor is another one of my sites, and there's 19 links. Warrior Forum, I've only got one post in there. So these other links that it's finding for Warrior Forum have got to be something else. It's from someone else. And notice that it, within there, it's got member benefits and uh, hosting, etc. So hopefully I am having other people linking to me or come to think of it looking at it, it might actually be my one page and the links that I have within my page coming back to it. But at least I'm able to see that um, Google has paid attention to the Warrior Forum for my site. White Hat Marketing is also mine. And let's take a, a look here to more. And you're going to see that like this domain tools, that's not me. Uh, uh, web name list. These are not very many extra links, but these are all organic links that are from here down. Those are organic links. And that's the kind of thing that Google wants to see. For a site that really hasn't been live for more than about a month or two, that it's not too bad. To go back to links to your site, also notice that Google is showing your most linked content. And uh, that's a good thing to know about because it's going to be able to help you to um, make good decisions about what to write about or what you need to add into your site. And then you can also see the way in which your data is linked. Now, if you have um, participated in any link schemes, you'll be able to see some of those links and see if they're popping up because most of the link schemes use um, anchor text that's keywords. And what Google is looking for is for it to be more organic for the keywords that are the anchor text um, because the average person is not going to use exactly the same keywords that you have in your site. You can also see internal links that are within your site. And notice that my site is... Uh, very rich when it comes to internal links because I definitely want to make sure that someone can go from one page to another within my site and I'm encouraging um, engagement with the site. Under the Google index you can see the index status and you can see the total indexed and it's actually showing here that I've, out of this particular site I've got 283 pages that have been indexed. I can also see my content keywords and Webmaster Tools looks at keywords differently than analytics. Notice that here for my keywords that I've got uh, two different variants, variants of themes. So if I click on this, I can then get an idea of where the top URLs are that contain the word themes or theme. And so you can see that it's looking everywhere and giving me an idea of the significance. Obviously, I'm repeating the name of the site all over the place. You can also tell Google to remove pages so that if you have... Um, you can use robots.txt to specify how search engines should crawl your site or request removals of URLs from Google search results. I've actually had to have this done for some of my uh, students' work, where their student work was showing up above, in, within search results, above their actual site. And so I was able to uh, submit uh, removal requests for those URLs. Under crawl, you'll find where there have been any crawl errors on your site. And you'll see that on, for this particular site, that there were three not found errors, but those particular errors were for pages that were only there momentarily and as I was developing the site, so I'm not really worried about it. Uh, you can also fetch as Googlebot, where you can tell Googlebot to go look at certain pages. Now, they only allow you X number of fetches, so you can't just go in there and just do this infinitely. 
You can also have blocked URLs and the um, Webmaster Tools is showing you what your sitemap looks like and it's also telling you whether it's um, ignoring any rules. For instance, I have this crawl delay rule that's in there. Uh, Google is ignoring that because in another setting elsewhere I told Google, you know, do it your way. Uh, but the crawl delay is for other bots in order to make sure they don't swamp the site. Um, I've been uh, told by tech support for my hosting company that sometimes whenever a bot is crawling a site it can look like thousands of people are accessing the site simultaneously and so uh, they requested that they, I put in that crawl delay in order to cut down on bandwidth usage and also it is letting me know that there's a valid sitemap that's been detected all right, so that's a good thing. Under sitemaps, we've already looked there. And because this is the same page that we went to from the dashboard. And then we have URL parameters. Uh, you don't, if you don't have any problems with your site, don't touch this because it can actually cause you to have some of your pages disappear from search results, and that would be a bad thing. Then under malware, this is a pretty simple page. It just tells you it hasn't detected anything. If it hasn't, if it has, it'll let you know. And then under additional tools, we have got a structured data testing tool where you can actually put in the URL and preview to see whether the structured data is coming through. And uh, let me just back up here. Also under additional tools, we've got the structured data markup helper. And as I mentioned before, uh, that actually is going to lead us, when we select start tagging, it actually takes us to the highlighter. And I didn't put in a URL, so it's not going to do anything. But anyway, it just goes to the highlighter. It's exactly the same thing, just a different way of approaching it. All right, and I also mentioned that the these last two items, the Google Places and the Google Merchant Center, those are really related more to either uh, local businesses or if you have actual um, product, uh, because it's going to expect you to have SKU numbers, etc. Under Labs, uh, you can add in something like custom search. Uh, but again, these are labs, and so therefore they can go away at any time or they can be changed at any time by Google. And so that is basically it. Um, I've covered um, Webmaster Tools, and I'm going to check one more time to see if there's any questions that have been posed. And I think we're ready to wrap up this webinar. Hopefully you have enjoyed it and that you will uh, come back for future webinars and and I also hope of course that you're going to use that uh, discount code and become a affiliate plus dot biz member and take advantage of all those different tutorials that are available to you so I am going to sign off now and again thank you and I really appreciate your time Oops.